it helped me improve my strength and stamina and uh, increased my you know, ability really to use weapons effectively. But this was nice. Uh, however, there are examples of, of this sort of weight behavior. Um, and then there are actually a lot of really weapons heavier than the actual gladiators. This is an interesting one. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. This today is a video response to Matt Easton's from Scholar Gladiatoria channel, one of my favourite channels on YouTube. He has recently published a video where he was talking about the idea of training with a heavier weapon than its actual battlefield counterpart for soldiers in ancient times and, and even considering whether it would be beneficial or not in our day and age. Now, I totally agree with what he said, and there will be a link in the description below to his um, video. Uh, but with this video, I would like to add, particularly on the part where he mentions the Romans and how the Romans did this, I would like to bring a little bit more context. So this video will be divided in two parts. In the first part, we will discuss about the Romans and what they actually did and where we get this information from. And in the second part, I will bring my own opinion to why the Romans decided to train or to have their soldiers train with heavier gladius. And we will approach this scientifically. Okay, so on your video you mentioned the fact that the Romans trained with a uh, heavier gladius, but where do we read this? Well, first of all, we, we read about Roman training in or in the uh, De Re Militari, written by Vegetius. So, Publius Flavius Vegetius Renatus. Yes, the Romans liked the sound of their own names, definitely. Now, some people say that Vegetius is not a particularly reliable source, I happen not to agree with such people and perhaps I will address this topic further in a dedicated video, but suffice to say that if we do believe what Vegetius says, and I do myself, um, he does mention uh, heavier gladius, but he also says something else. Let's read it together. We are informed by the writings of the ancients that, among their other exercises, they had that of the post. They gave their recruits round bucklers woven with quillons, twice as heavy as those used on real service, and wooden swords, double weight of the common ones. They exercised them at the post, both morning and afternoon. De Re Militari, Book 1. Okay, by reading the words of Vegetius, we do realise two very important things. Aspect number one, not only they trained with double weight um, gladius, but they also trained with double weight shields. And considering the weight of Roman shields, that shield must have weighed quite a bit. So in the sense of weapon mastery, um, you do mention the fact that it's already a rather uh, light sword, so perhaps that wouldn't really make much sense, but in the sense of when we talk about the scutum, then yes, scutum would be rather heavy, and I think the ability to carry a scutum and move it around quickly uh, might be worth the extra training. And perhaps while they were at it, why not training with the gladius itself? I will get more into details why I think it would still be good to train with a, with a heavier gladius, even if the gladius itself is a rather nimble and light weapon. But before getting to that, let's examine the second inf piece of information we gather from Vegetius, and that is how much these soldiers actually did this, and he does mention morning and afternoon. So from this we do realise that during the training of soldiers, this was one way that the Romans focused on to build their muscles. Well, you see, Vegetius was uh, alive around the 4th century. Now, there is some debate on where, when exactly this De Re Militari was um, finished, but we do know that he was a 4th century Roman. One thing is important to note, though, is that he's talking about previous Roman times. As a matter of fact, this volume that he's creating has the uh, main purpose of trying to bring back Rome to the splendour of ancient times. To be specific, he is talking about mid and late Republican times. Now, as I mentioned, on the second part of this video, we will discuss the scientific reasons why it would be beneficial to train with double weight, gladius and scutum. I think all of this might have to do with um, strength training, muscle training and hypertrophy. 
Now we do know that athletes use a combination of strength, training, diet and nutritional supplementation to induce muscle hypertrophy in modern times. Now considering the sort of highly proteic diet that Roman soldiers would have on campaign, such increase in size of skeletal muscle through a growth in size of its component cells might have occurred. A soldier with an increased explosive strength and functional strength would be a more effective killing machine. Now I believe to thoroughly comprehend this we might want to have a look at Davis Law. We know that muscle growth occurs during the process of healing of muscle fibre microtrauma caused by weightlifting and training, and soft tissue healed according to the manner in which it is mechanically stressed. Similar to the behaviour of bony tissue, this adaptational response occurs only if the mechanical strain exceeds a certain threshold value. For dense collagenous tissues, such threshold would equal to 4% strain elongation. So in conclusion it is my opinion that the Romans were achieving two things with dedicating mornings and afternoons for their soldiers to such training at the pole. They would increase their effectiveness in combat, given perhaps not such an astonishing result with the gladius, but considering that they had to do that with the scutum, if they didn't also do it with the gladius, that would create an unbalanced practice. And also, and mind you, training the muscles to be able to thrust this weapon more quickly would still be a valuable ability to have. The quicker it is, the harder it is to block. And another important thing to say, which is perfectly coherent with your uh, thought, is that, as I said, Vegetius mentions the pole. Now, when the Romans were practicing at the pole, they were not fighting or sparring. They were attacking a pole to learn, to teach their muscles to perform certain attacks. But while they would finish practicing at the pole, their practice would be against the sparring partner. And against sparring partners, they would move to shields and wooden gladii of the same weight as battlefield counterparts. So this is perfect, on, perfectly in line with your thought that yes, it would be good for your muscle, but you do need to learn to handle a weapon of the actual weight and balancement. Otherwise, you will not be as effective at wielding one on the battlefield. And yes, the Romans did think of that and during sparring, they did not use the double weight strategy of training. All right, noble one. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up, share it on your social networks, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. See you tomorrow. Roma, invicta.